We'll start this video with a very quick review of the lymphatic system. I will post um, a video from uh, AMP on the lymphatics if anybody wants to review it. Um, so the lymphatic system is the system that consists of the lymph, which is really interstitial fluid brought into the lymphatic system. Um, the lymphatic vessels, which are pipes that conduct lymph from the uh, lymph capillaries in the capillary beds back and re-enter circulation um, at the subclavian veins. Um, so it's, it returns liquid to the uh, circulatory system. There are uh, lymphatic structures and lymphatic organs and lymphatic tissue, uh, which includes red bone marrow. But, uh, so this would be like lymph nodes, spleen, um, appendix, tonsils, all of that. Um, the, one of the primary functions is to drain the excess interstitial fluid back to the circulatory system. They are also used to transport dietary fats. Um, there are um, lymph capillaries in uh, called lacteals in the uh, intestines, and that's where fat gets transported uh, and it enters circulation um, along with the rest of the lymph. And this is also the place where immune responses happen. So that whole bit on immunity that we did earlier in the semester is all takes place in the lymphatics. Um, So they, there are these little blind-ended lymph capillaries uh, that come together to form lymphatic vessels, collecting vessels. Uh, they're kind of like veins in that they have um, valves, thin-walled, low-pressure things. Uh, they are one-way flow. Um, the lymphatic vessels come together at places called lymph nodes and in the lymph nodes, the lymph is uh, surveilled and cleaned. Um, so in the lymph nodes, there are uh, lots of lymph cells, T and B lymphocytes, uh, and they will they are involved in um, the immune response. Quick reminder. Uh, because of these mini flaps, the interstitial fluid goes in, but so do any chunks, any bacteria, any proteins, anything like that will, will enter the lymph, which is why it's a very useful place to, um, to pick up any infections and things like that. Uh, it's a good place to fight any pathogens. There are the primary lymph organs, uh, where the stem cells divide and become um, the, the blood cells. The, primarily the white blood cells is what they're talking about here. Um, they become immunocompetent. So the, there's really the bone marrow and the thymus are the primary lymphatic organs because this is where lymphocytes are made and become competent. The secondary is where the where they are used. So this is lymph nodes, spleen, lymphatic nodules, Peyer's patches, appendix, uh, places like that. So that's just a very quick review of that. We're really here to talk about pathology of the lymphatic system. So uh, if the primary lymph cell is the lymphocyte uh, or the white blood cell, the first pathology we're going to talk about is leukemia. Leuco means white, emia means in the blood, presence of the blood. So these are neoplasms of white blood cells. These are cancer of the white blood cells. 
Years ago, this was almost a certain death sentence. Now, in survival rates have improved quite a bit, although they're not uh, not a hundred percent by by far. Um, it tends to be um, bimodal in that uh, children are susceptible, seem to be susceptible to it, um, and so are the elderly. And if you think about it, children are growing quickly, they're developing their immune system, they're, they're having a lot of immune, immune challenges, etc. cetera. Um, there's more that can go wrong. And um, elderly, because um, mistakes add up uh, it, over time. Uh, so stem cells get tired and they, they stop producing as competently as they, they did in the past. So if leukemia is, the, is cancer of white blood cells, what do you expect the signs and symptoms would be? The first thing is obviously uh, frequent or severe infections, infections that are very hard to, to deal with uh, because then that's a problem of white blood cells. Um, but something that, that happens in the leukemia, because these, this happens primarily in bone marrow, you also end up with bone pain. You end up with fever and chills. Um, it can affect the production of red blood cells as well and platelets as well because the, the resources are being taken up by producing all kinds of ineffectual uh, white blood cells. And so the stem cells can't become red blood cells. So red blood cell counts go down and you get fatigue and weakness. Um, you get weight loss uh, because you're not carrying enough oxygen. You're making ATP anaerobically a lot. Uh, so you use a lot of resources to make ATP. Uh, oftentimes there's problems with platelets and they're therefore uh, hemostasis problems. So you get easy bleeding and bruising. You get petechiae in the skin. You get nosebleeds. Um, all of these things are pretty typical leukemia symptoms. One of my close friends uh, was feeling fatigue and weakness and that really out of character for him. And he started noticing that he was bruising really easily. Um, and he was getting some swollen lymph nodes. So he went to the doctor, and it turned out that he got diagnosed with leukemia. Uh, he fought it for about three years, uh, but it, it kept on coming back. It was a, a chronic, and he uh, subsequently passed away from it. Uh, I'll talk more about it as we get into his and uh, into more of the treatments and things. Okay, so the pathophysiology of this is when um, when certain mutations happen and a leukocyte type starts to multiply uncontrollably in the bone marrow. They're released into the blood as immature, undifferentiated, non-functional uh, white blood cells. They start to pile up in lymph nodes, in the spleen, liver and brain, so they can they can muck up the function of that. Uh, they use up the resources and they use up the space in the bone marrow and so uh, often will cause a, uh, a decrease in platelets and or red blood cells. Now just to remind you, the stem cells 
in um, hematopoiesis uh, first differentiate into uh, lymphoid stem cells or myeloid stem cells. The myeloid stem cells give rise to the granulocytes, the, which are the neutrophils, um, the eosinophils, and the basophils. Remember, granulocytes all have fill in the name. They uh, give rise to the monocytes, which become macrophages. They give rise to the red blood cells, and they give rise to megakaryocytes, which um, become platelets, and fragment to become platelets. The lymphoid stem cells give rise to uh, the natural killer cells, the B lymphocytes, and the T lymphocytes. So the, the three types of lymphocytes, the two uh, specific and the one non-specific type of. So um, if you look at where these, um, these inappropriate things happen, it gives rise to these different types of, um, of leukemias. So if it's on the myeloid side, you can have a granula, granulocytic leukemia, so that would be in the neutrophils and the eosinophils and the basophils. You can have problems with monocytes, which is inappropriate macrophages. Uh, you can end up with polycythemia vera um, or uh, problems with the erythrocytes, the erythroid leukemia. Uh, you can end up with uh, thrombocytopenia or thrombocyte emia uh, and platelet problems. Or on the lymphoid side, you can end up with uh, natural killer cell leukemia, lymphomas. You can see the, this or lymphoma, multiple myeloma in the B cells, T cells, T cell leukemia, lymphoma. So you'll see that on this side, they are called lymphomas. On the myeloid side, they tend to be called more uh, by whatever cell is involved. So we can divide leukemias into acute leukemias and chronic leukemias. In acute leukemia, the abnormal blood cells uh, are immature. They don't carry out their natural functions. They multiply really rapidly, and the disease worsens quickly. It requires really aggressive treatment. Um, so, so these immature, non-functional cells, they're still blast cells. They're not, they haven't become the site. Um, type cell, ends up being put out into circulation. They're non-functional and they don't mature. Now, um, you can, there's, you can also classify um, by the type of cell uh, affected. So the lymphocytic leukemias, which are on the uh, we're on the left of that previous picture in the myelogenous, uh, myeliogenous leukemias, which are the, the myelocyte. So, um, and both of these can be acute or, um, or chronic. So, well, if we, if we look at it, we can have acute lymphocytic leukemia, ALL. It's the most common type of leukemia in, in kids, but it also happens in adults. Um, 
there's the acute myelogenous leukemia, AML. It's common. Uh, it occurs in both kids and adults. Uh, and it's the one that most uh, adults get. There's chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL. It's the most con chronic common adult leukemia. These people feel fairly well for years. Uh, they probably don't even need treatment. And then there's the chronic myelo myeliogenous leukemia. And it affects adults primarily. Um, you have very few symptoms for months or years, and then you enter a phase where the leukemia cells grow rapidly and, um, and can be a real problem. So that's just really the overview. So in, when we're looking at the lymphocytic leukemia, the ALL, you've got an increased number of non-functional lymphocytes are in the bone marrow. And because there's uh, non-functional lymphocytes, you, you get multiple infections that are very hard to treat because your immune system's not working against them. You get this pressure within the bone marrow, so that leads to bone pain and tenderness. Um, the bone marrow starts to expand. Um, and you get the, the lymphoblasts. Normally, you don't get very many lymphoblasts in the blood, but in this case, you do. It also crowds out the other... Uh, cell production decreases production of red blood cells which leads to anemia and decrease of platelets which leads to bleeding the chronic is slower onset less aggressive um, the cells that are released are, are some of them are mature and uh, have function. Prognosis is pretty good. Um, the chronic uh, lymphocytic leukemia tends to be older adults. Um, and like I say, it's um, it probably won't even be treated. This is the sort of disease that doctors would say to an elderly person, you're going to die with this rather than from this. The chronic myelogenous leukemia, uh, the problem is in the, the granulocytic stem cells. It's in the myeloid site. Um, it tends to hit middle-aged uh, people. It's what my friend Jim had. Uh, and it does a lot of the same things that we just saw, that it, it causes a decrease in uh, the red blood cells, but not because of crowding, but because it's the same stem cell as the red blood cells. It causes a decrease in platelets, again, because it's the same stem cell. Um, because those stem cells are all differentiating into the inappropriate granulocytic uh, white blood cell. Uh, and so they, they're using up the resources for the others. Now, uh, treatment for it is, is chemotherapy and try and, and kill these cells, which then leaves you immunotherapy suppressed and immunodeficient. And after two bouts of that, and with it reoccurring, uh, the next thing is a stem cell transplant, or what they used to call bone marrow transplant. And uh, that may or may not take. One of the big problems with stem cell transplant is uh, is rejection, but it's not the host rejecting the transplant. It's the transplant and the new immune system 
attacking all the host's uh, normal tissue because it's really somebody else's immune system. Uh, and it can be very painful and very uh, illness producing. And this is what happened to my friend Jim. And uh, when it started to flare up again, he just decided to not take any more treatment and just chose to let it run its course. So where does it come from? In kids, we don't really know. It's uh, a lot of people think that it's um, it could be genetic disorders. Um, things like Down syndrome and other genetic problems seem to have a high correlation uh, and association with increased risk of leukemia. In adults, it is a lot of lifestyle stuff, uh, exposure to radiation, chemicals, especially solvents, uh, viral infections, especially um, some of the herpes viruses, the viruses that don't go away, uh, chemotherapy for other things, because chemotherapy targets um, cells that are uh, undergoing mitosis and stem cells undergo mitosis a lot. Uh, some of them are just problems of mitosis itself, chromosome translocations just um, and all it really takes is is this starting and then uh, if those bad stem cells start multiplying then it can become a tumor of that So the lymphoblastic leukemias are also known as lymphomas. Now, uh, this is the other type of stem cell. My father actually had a lymphoma. Um, there's two peaks of incidence in this, little kids and uh, and the second is in middle age or upper middle age. Um, my dad was around 60 when he had it. Um, the acute version is primarily seen in children. Uh, it's the second leading cause of death uh, in this, in kids. The have, it has an abrupt onset, bruising, fever, infection, uh, bone pain. It says children may refuse to walk. Well, that's because it hurts. Bones hurt. Um, you get uh, loss of appetite and fatigue because of red blood cell problems, uh, abdominal pain, liver and lymph node issues. Remember the uh, lymphocytes work primarily in lymph nodes and so the, they'll swell up the lymph nodes. Uh, probably not painful but very enlarged. Uh, and it, it can even present with central nervous system signs. So prognosis is actually pretty good 85% five-year survival, um, way less in adults, um, unless it's caught early. Um, different forms are, respond differently to therapy. Um, chemotherapy is really um, the most useful thing. Um, You may have to have a stem cell transplant, um, but if there is a remission, uh, they still will do chemotherapy to try and keep it going. Um, 
Sometimes these tumors express specific antigens. So um, if that's the case, there are monoclonal antibodies that can be used to, to target those antigens. Uh, all of these treatments are more or less effective. Again, it's as they find it. The chronic lymphoid leukemia uh, are about 30%. The problem usually is um, a malignant B cell or a B cell precursor. Um, some are T cells, but usually it's B cells. And if you remember, B cells become plasma cells and then they produce antibodies. Uh, if these, the biggest problem with this is that there's the non-functioning B cells. And so there is immuno uh, deficiencies. What happens is the bone marrow infiltrates with these, reduces the production of other cells because it's using up the resources. You get all of these lymphoid type cells. Um, a, a lot of what goes wrong with these B cells is that they, they normally don't last a long time, but the, they die of apoptosis, but there's an, a defect in the apoptosis, so they have long lifespans. Uh, so fatigue, weight loss, anorexia, all from the loss of red blood cells in the anemia, a susceptibility to infections because the, you're not making the correct antibodies. Uh, you can have enlarged lymph nodes. So this is called lymph adenopathy. They're painless. Uh, you can have problems of uh, enlarged spleen. Again, these get caught up in the spleen and uh, need to be removed. So generally speaking, all of these things get uh, treated with chemotherapy. Um, Lifestyle things are really important, nutrition, hydration. Uh, a lot of people need to get blood transfusions or at least um, parts of blood. People um, will get infusions of platelets, etc., uh, if to help with some of the symptoms. Uh, bone marrow transplant, like stem cell transplant, uh, can happen. It depends on how far along and just what's going on. Uh, it's not as easy as you think, and it leads to oftentimes more problems than it corrects. That's a whole other thing. Um, dental procedures in patients with leukemia should be postponed. I think that can be safely said about um, any uh, immunosuppression or immunodeficiency uh, issues. And that's because infections in a tooth or in the gums um, will not get dealt with and uh, they will enter circulation and you can get septicemia. Okay, the next one is Lymphoma. There are two types of lymphoma. Um, there's the Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma is a problem uh, that tends to affect adults. Um, it's um, middle-aged adults, like 20 to 50, but really it's kind of 40 to 50 is usually where it's caught. Um, the prognosis is excellent if it's caught early. 
Uh, this is really tumors. The other ones, the leukemias, are, are, are tumors in the bone marrow. Lymphomas are tumors in the lymph nodes. Uh, so um, Hodgkin's tends to start in one lymph node in the neck. And we often see these things called Reed-Sternberg cells. They, uh, and it's done with, with a biopsy, you, you, you see it. Um, and these Reed-Sternbergs are cells that, um, that are kind of clear, they, they're larger, uh, the nucleus is irregular. It's, it's just a histological feature that, that can be seen in the biopsy. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is, uh, is kind of the second major class. And it tends to be a problem of B lymphocytes. Uh, and it's a tumor of the B lymphocytes in the lymph nodes. Um, it's more difficult to treat. Um, it can disseminate throughout the body, multiple lymph nodes everywhere in the body. Um, it's, um, let me just, its prognosis is improving all the time, but it's not as good as the, um, Hodgkin's. Now, both of them get staged stages one, two, three, and four. So stage one is one lymph node, or maybe I, uh, one or one region at least of lymph nodes, but it's usually one lymph node. Stage two is two or more lymph nodes, or lymph nodes found in two regions. Um, stage three, on both sides of the diaphragm, um, so, above the diaphragm and below the diaphragm. And stage four is if it involves bone, lung, or liver. Um, so the uh, signs and symptoms of Hodgkin's lymphoma are large, painless lymph nodes, usually in the cervical region, and enlarged spleen, spleen uh, Weight loss, fever, night sweats, fatigue, itchiness, increased infections uh, is a big one. So it spreads to adjacent lymph nodes. Uh, it's usually a problem of T lymphocytes. And we've just talked about the staging, the number of nodes and the areas involved. Um, so painless, non-tender, splenomegaly, uh, weight loss, anemia, night sweats, fatigue, a general itchiness, and recurrent infections. Now, you have to be careful about that because liver disease causes itchiness, etc. And so these things are, can be rather nonspecific. It's seen as a whole. So stage four, stage one up here in the neck, stage two, a couple of regions on the same side of the diaphragm, stage three, above and below the diaphragm, stage four, in the liver and the spleen involvement. So the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, multiple node pattern. Like I say, it tends to be the B lymphocytes that do it. Um, usually uh, abdominal pain. Oftentimes it's... Um, there is coughing and trouble breathing because for some reason it seems to um, cause lymphatic buildup um, 
in the chest. They don't really know what causes um, non-Hodgkin's. Uh, probably a weakened immune system. Um, the the lymphocytes, the B lymphocytes don't die, but continue to grow and divide. Um, and so if you remember, um, when B lymphocytes are activated in the lymph nodes, they clone, they, they multiply clones of themselves. So they, they divide, and that's what seems to be triggered off here. And then normally they die, but these ones don't. Um, sometimes non-Hodgkin's can start in the T cells. Um, it's not not as common. It's normally B cells. So the last pathology we're going to talk about is multiple myeloma. Now multiple myeloma, myelo means marrow. It's the bone marrow. Um, they don't really know what causes it. Um, it's again a problem of of plasma cells of B lymphocytes um, making plasma cell pro problems, but they they start to activate and and mal and malignantly grow within the bone marrow, and because of that, they actually start to erode the bone. Because uh, plasma cells produce antibodies, you don't, because these are not functional, you get way too many non-functional ones and you don't make good antibodies. Uh, it's called multiple myeloma because it seems to spread uh, in multiple tumors within bone marrow. Oftentimes it happens in the uh, spongy bone of the skull for some reason, uh, but it can happen anywhere in any bone in the in the bone marrow. You end up with uh, spontaneous fractures or pathological fractures of the bone. And another thing that happens because it seems to spark osteoclastic activity. Uh, the, that's what, why the bone erodes. All of this calcium is uh, released into the um, in, into the blood, so you end up with a hypercalcemia. Um, bone pain is usually the first uh, symptom of this. Uh, it's present at rest as well. Uh, so it's not just pain when, when you're using or you're walking and that kind of thing. There tends to be bleeding tendencies because you'll end up with bone marrow issues. Um, proteinuria, because there's a lot of proteins released into the blood and, and your kidneys have trouble keeping up. Um, it can lead to kidney failure. Um, plasma cells are are usually producing they think they're producing antibodies but it's just inappropriate proteins and and the protein has to be gotten rid of somehow and it overwhelms the uh, the kidneys you get frequent infections as well so um Here's an x-ray of it, and all of these little clear spots here in the skull is multiple myeloma, punched out lesions. And we'll wrap it up at that.